our hearts and prayers and minds are with people who have been victims of shooting incidents. Can you tell us where you stand on the issues of gun control? Me first, thank you. Um, gun violence is is terrifying and it's awful, and I think we need to take steps as elected officials and in our communities to combat gun violence, and we need to make sure that we keep in mind the the constitutional rights and freedoms that made people particularly are very important to them. I believe strongly that we need background checks. We need comprehensive background checks uh, for sure. I voted that for the last 10 years, every time it came up. Um, I'm a big believer that that is one of the most important things we can do for gun safety right now. I, I think we also need to invest in mental health and making sure we're taking care of the whole person um, because it, it has a lot to, the, the violence that happens isn't just because we don't have background checks. I mean, there's so many pieces of the, of the puzzle there. And so I, I believe strongly we need to take action when it comes to gun violence. And I think background checks, comprehensive background checks, are, are really the smartest way to start. Thank you. Right. Uh, well, again, starting out as a parent, uh, you know, I, I maybe would have a lot of different view if I was one of those parents. Because uh, that is unbelievable what, what uh, has happened in some of the places. You know, that being said, uh, I think for the most part, Maine has had a great culture of uh, parents teaching their children uh, safety. Uh, you know, I am someone that definitely believes the people in this state being able to you know, hunt and have firearms. Uh, that being said, I've said you know, throughout uh, my time that I would support a uh, background check legislation if it made sense for all Maine. Uh, what we've seen in the last session uh, when we had people come in and talk to us about an amended version of uh, what it would uh, do. Uh, I think when they left, there was more questions than there were before we came in. Uh, people didn't understand how it was going to work in the rural areas. I know in my uh, part of the state, I didn't at all understand how uh, the amended version was going to work uh, for people in Maine. So, I mean, I'm not averse to uh, background checks, but I want to make sure that it works for uh, people that uh, have had the gun safety in the state and has uh, used uh, guns in an accurate and correct way. Thank you. Other questions from the audience? You know me, Bob. I've I always I had a question. question. I held back. I just want to make sure there's no one else. Oh, one absolutely. Over. Anyone else? Hearing no one else? No. We have someone in front. Well, I just want to follow up on, on, on what we've been talking about, about guns. Um, specifically, um, do you support, this is for both of you. Yeah, um, and this will be answered oh, first by Carl. Okay. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> Guns in, in schools and on college campuses, guns for game wardens, um, you know, what else? Supermarkets, whatever, concealed weapons. I mean, do you, do you have opinions about um, restricting right. places that yeah. people can yeah. have their guns? Yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, in our time, also, I mean, both our times, uh, we've had bills for uh, keeping guns off of uh, college campuses. Uh, school grounds, stuff like that. I definitely support that. I mean, that's uh, something that you know was a no-brainer in my opinion. Um, this session we had uh, a bill for uh, uh, fire wardens, uh, game, uh, not game wardens, but uh, force, force rangers. Excuse me. Yeah, they used to be called fire wardens. Now they're force rangers. Uh, I supported that. I uh, had. Uh, we used to have a lot of force rangers in my area of the state. Uh, I actually used to go with my uncle to what's called Amazask and, and, and uh, patrol there with him when I, I was, you know, five, six years old. And, and what he used to do compared to what I see uh, the Rangers doing today is, is a lot different. Uh, I do feel that they're putting harm's way at a time. I know that because I've passed legislation that's uh, uh, had them actually have to do more uh, for their jobs. And sometimes they're out there by themselves. and, and, uh, and you know, I had discussions with uh, a lot of rangers. I went into it thinking that I, I wasn't going to support it. And when I talked to them about uh, the fact that they were in those positions, uh, many times whenever a game warden or state police wanted them to go with them, uh, because you know, we don't have enough of those people either, uh, they felt that they couldn't take them with them because they were putting them in harm's way. 
so I changed my position on that, and, and this uh, session, uh, you know, I, I fought for it. I was uh, uh, frustrated that the governor vetoed that bill also, and uh, you know, I think that uh, you know they deserve to feel that they're safe up there, and uh, so I, I support that. But I mean, there's definitely places uh, that I don't believe the guns are appropriate. College campuses, uh, schools, elementary schools uh, are all off limits. Uh, you know, courthouses, uh, hospitals, you, you know, you name it. But uh, you know, I don't think that's the main uh, what what we have going here. I think we have people that want to use them for hunting activities. We've done a good job with that. Uh, you know, there's some people that uh, have definitely gone too far trying to push uh, gun rights, and uh, and I don't support those people. Thank you. Emily? Thank you. I definitely support restricting guns in schools. I think college campuses are also a place guns should not be uh, on campus. I'll tell you a story. I, I worked as a, a resident assistant when I was in college at the University of Maine. During hunting season, they actually had a policy on, on campus where students could leave their guns at public safety at the police department so that they could get up early and get them and go hunting. That's important. People like to do that. And I think it, you know, common sense things like that that make people able to keep their guns rather than, God forbid, bringing them into the residence halls or keeping them in their, just in their back seats. It made sense, you know, to try to value and make it easy for people to go hunting in a responsible way uh, without having those guns be just around campus. And so that was, that was a, a good, thoughtful way, I think, to approach that. I think this past session working with the forest rangers was a wonderful experience. They were extremely passionate about the issue and I did support that bill as well. I think the role of the forest rangers has changed a lot and what they're encountering now. Uh, it's appropriate for them to have the training and have the firearms that they need to do their jobs effectively. Uh, and that was common sense to me. But I think this question around, around guns is going to keep coming up. I did not support the open carry legislation, for example that uh, was brought forward by Republicans this session to just allow, with, a, with no concealed carry permit, uh, to have a gun. And that that was not a good plan, I think, for me. I was glad to see that bill fail. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from the audience? <laughs> Would you like to ask that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm coming from the bridge today in Lisbon over by the old War Rumble Mill there. And now it says on it, one truck at a time. Mm -hmm. And as I'm driving across and I'm looking at the concrete that has disappeared and the rebar is showing, I'm thinking, are there too many vehicles on this bridge right now? You know, it seems to me that in this country we should be able to find the money to fix our infrastructure and these bridges that were built before we were made to born. And, you know, I mean, it seems to me that we could put people to work. We can't outsource it. I mean, where do you all stand on that? Bringing home some bacon so we can not fall in the river. Oh. Absolutely. And it, you know, in my time in Augusta, I've been on the Appropriations Committee for a lot of years. And the best moments are when we're able to put together large bond packages to invest in roads and bridges and draw down those federal match dollars for roads, bridges, ports, ferries, airports, trains. Because it all needs work across the state. And I'm sure Senator Jackson would agree, we both travel these roads now all the time. And there isn't a day goes by that I don't hit something or hear something or see something and I say, we've got to do better. So I, I absolutely support, I, do, I would do everything I could as a member of Congress, like I have as a member of, of the legislature over the past 10 years, to focus our investments on that infrastructure. Because as I said earlier, I think to the answer to the first question, that's how we literally build the foundation of how we grow our economy for the future. That's how we enable companies to move their goods, people to move safely, and to live in places all across the state they can get there, get there safely. So I think there's a lot of ways the federal government works. There's all kinds of programs that they run just to help support different types of state infrastructure. And I think the fact that I've had that background on the finance side at the state level will make me a, a strong advocate for pairing up some of those fe federal resources uh, with, with the state dollars. All right. Well, I think this is about priorities. And, and you know, uh, people talk about, uh, you know, going back years ago and stuff like that. But, you know, when we were in a recession, you know, back in the 30s, I mean, what did Roosevelt do? He started building things. And, you know, sometimes people even question, you know, what, what good it was. 
but what it did was it put people to work and we started getting interstate systems and things like that and so for myself i mean it's the same thing here in maine as it is nationally i mean there's too many people in washington that are focusing on uh, giving tax breaks uh, giving away everything and, and there's no resources left to do that. I mean, if you spend $400 million in tax breaks here, uh, that's going to choke out some of the resources that uh, we can use to actually build roads and things in this state. And so, I mean, I, I think that, you know, fighting wars that aren't paid for, uh, you know, giving Wall Street breaks, uh, those are all things that have to stop and, and we have to have a, a reprioritization to start doing, uh, you know, infrastructure, putting people to work in this country, in this state, and that's something that, you know, I very much want to start having those conversations. There's too many people that all they want to do is talk about, you know, we'll cut our taxes, cut our taxes. Uh, I don't believe that's the answer. I think putting people to work and more people have money in, in their pockets in this economy is actually what the answer is. And building roads and bridges definitely puts people to work and, and, and in this state, uh, we're way, way behind on it. I mean, it'll take a long time to get that caught back up. Thank you, Troy. Questions from the audience? Uh, <coughs> yes, sir. Um, so, Troy just mentioned uh, like putting more money back into people's pockets you know, and whatnot, which is you know exactly what the goal should be in an economy like this right now. Um, my question kind of focuses more on post-secondary education and uh, the problems that we found with massive student loan debt that people have now. Uh, and essentially it's a two-part question. So I'm curious about what you would do for those of us now that are facing, you know, an especially high student loan burden. You know, for example, myself, uh, I pay 15% of my income for student loans, which, you know, I'm living with my parents. It's not the worst thing in the world, but the friends that I have, you know, who are, who are single parents, you know, it's my age, maybe not making the income that I'm making even, uh, you know, haven't been able to find the jobs that we were necessarily hoping to getting out of college, which you know we kind of expected going into it. It's not going to be handed to you, but it's a two-part question that I want to know what you would do to address the issue as it stands with the debt that's already accumulated, whether or not that be, you know, I guess chopping off some of the interest rates that we have to pay, because the fact is if you don't pay the maximum amount of money now per month, what you end up doing is essentially paying your student loans for the rest of your life. And so, as someone that could easily put that money back into the economy, whether it be a new house or a new car, which are exactly <coughs> the kinds of things that really need to, you know, have that boost, that's, that's a significant part of the problem. The other, the other part is not so much a question, more is like, what is your ultimate solution for, you know, going forward into the future? Not the debt that's already accumulated for, you know, students that are out of school, but how can we make it so that, you know, it doesn't happen for kids that are coming out of high school and going to college, uh, you know, I'm not discounting or excluding tech programs as well. So, you know, I want to hear your ideas as far as it goes in a normal college university setting and then as well as, you know, tech programs and certificate degrees. What do you think we can do to get people educated as best we can for the workforce without putting this massive, you know, burden of, of debt on their backs as they, as they enter it? Thank you. Roy? <laughs> great, great question. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, we're running our education system in this country uh, like we are our healthcare system. It, you know, it's a, a for-profit scam. I mean, it's basically the policing of America. Uh, what people were promised uh, as far as uh, being able to go to school, uh, get educated, get a good job, and get the American dream, uh, that's not happening for not near enough people. And, and I think it's uh, you know a real tragedy that uh, you know, so many people were made to feel that uh, you know this is the, what their path to success was, and when they end up getting there, all they find out is that you know they have crushing debt. You know, uh, in my uh, family, um, you know, my wife has outrageous student loans. Exactly what we talked about. They're in deferment right now. I mean, she's just paying the interest, and, and we don't expect to get out of them. And, and Chase is here. He has student debt, so for us, it's generational, and, and I really don't know how we are going to get out of it, but I know every month when those payments come in, uh, it hurts, you know, it hurts a lot. So I, I feel it, you know, very much, but I think that, you know, one of the ways, uh, right off the bat, uh, you know, again, I, I hate to keep coming back to this, but I really do think it's, it's part of what the problem is with the country, is that the people on Wall Street get everything they wanted for far too long, and, and you know, they got bank bailouts, that they didn't have to pay any interest back. 
They got the absolute best deals that you could ever imagine. Why we can't do that same thing for students in this country? Give them uh, loans or, or give them Pell Grants that uh, have no or, or absolutely hardly any interest? I don't understand why uh, we're not talking about this more. I mean, if the banks could get that, that absolute best deal ever, then I, I think that uh, putting that, that same type of deal on the table for our students, like Senator Warren's talking about, is uh, a, a no-brainer and something that we shouldn't even have to be. Uh, if Wall Street can get the big deals, Main Street should be able to get them too. So I would be uh, something that I started out with. Uh, you know, we talked about a lot in this campaign and nationally, uh, the Robin Hood tax. Again, the financial transactions on, uh, on stock exchanges and things like that, they don't have to pay them. Everyone else in this room has to pay the taxes on, on the purchases. Uh, we should be taxing those people. They're going to be fine. They get all kinds of money, you know, a little bit on each one of those transactions so that we put it into something like uh, Pell Grants or uh, low interest loans uh, for people to get out of. And I absolutely, I agree that the people that are right now with that debt, if we want to spur the economy, get them out from underneath that debt right now. That will certainly uh, make a huge difference. I think that was a failure of the bank bailouts. Instead of giving the banks the money, we should have given the homeowners the money so they pay off their loans. The banks would have got their money anyways, and then everyone would have been, uh, come out of this fair. But, uh, but we didn't do that. We capitulated and give it to the, the Wall Street types again. And, uh, and that's why we're still struggling today with the low housing markets and, and things like that. So I don't know if I've answered all your questions. I, 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 understand, <laughs> I understand exactly what you're talking about, and I think that that's part of the problem. I mean, we've got a Congress full of millionaires. Yeah, so Congress full of millionaires are listening to the millionaires, and they're not paying attention to the things like you and I uh, have trouble with. Emma. Thank you. I live in a college town, and I work at the University of Maine. Every single day, I encounter students who are not sure they're going to be able to come back the next semester. Or we had commencement two weeks ago, and the number of students that came across the stage, I know so many of them are coming out with just drowning in debt, and it's wrong. I, I think. We made a mistake as a country when the federal government got in the loan business rather than in the let's make college more affordable business. The Pell Grants were originally supposed to pay for 75% of the cost of college. That's a fact. Now you're lucky if they cover 20%, maybe, and that's for those who need the most financial help. In the 90s, we created the Hope and Lifetime Learning Tax Credits to target middle class families. Those are good programs, but they need to be updated because now the cost of college is completely out of whack. And I, it drives me crazy when I watch television, which is not very often these days, but you see the commercials that says, there's blah, 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 billions of dollars available for you to go to college. And it's sponsored by the federal government. We have to do what Senator Elizabeth Warren is talking about with allowing students to refinance their debt. If you can refinance your mortgage, you should be able to refinance your student debt. You used to be able to lock in your rate at 2% for the life of a loan. And now, in fact, it happened under George W. Bush, gave the power back to the loans, back to the loan companies and let them float the rates and people are paying so much of their hard-earned money, they can't get into the career they wanted to. They can't start the business they dreamed of because it's holding back. The way we finance higher education in this country is not sustainable. And I think it, it involves both you know, invigorating things like the Pell Grants and those tax credits, but also convening that national conversation about what's driving this cost. And is it really what's in the best interest of students? Because I'm, I'm not convinced that it is. Um, so I, I, this is a real soapbox issue for me. Uh, University of Maine, I was lucky, offered a college education that my family could afford. And I am so grateful for that. But you know, traveling around the state, you just meet so many people whose kids can't live at home, not, not actually at home, there's nothing wrong with that, but can't well, live, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it, but who can't live where they grew up because they have to move someplace to take a job that pays them more that is not really what they want to do. And that's not how we're going to build our economy here in Maine. We need to make sure we address the issues around affordability and the way we finance higher education so people can make the choice to have that career they wanted and invest in the communities where they grew up. Thank you. Questions? Just in follow-up to that end, I would ask the both of you 